I'm Kevin Mamajek, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. All right, I'm assuming you've watched the service, analytics service. Uh, you've watched the how to create test data, and you've watched tagging. Those three out of the way, you should be ready to figure out how we can do some sort of analytic query. So I'm going to go back to the example where I have a schedule uh, created with a bunch of test data, right? The only thing I need to do now is I need to tag this specific point, right? So in the simulator, it's a little tricky. I don't want to tag the schedule. I want to tr tag the simulator. So I'm going to have to go to the uh, property sheet. And then down here where the simulator is, that's where I'm going to add my tag. So I click on energy, what did I call it there? Energy, energy data. I say edit tags. And this is where I want to apply the tag because you'll see the history uh, tag is applied there. Now, <laughs> I'm going to do something I told you not to do in the last video. And that is I'm going to put a direct tag, but you'll see why. It's just kind of to make it clear. Um, so I'm going to use haystack, haystack energy. Double click. And then you'll see that I'm going to add that tag. Save it. Now that tag is on that point. Um, I'm going to I'm going to show you this again because what I want you to see is there is no a colon a yet here, right? So just to let you know, and I'm going to remind you here, make sure in the service auto tag is turned on. It's true. If you don't, um, your analytic won't execute because it won't get uh, tagged for the engine appropriately. So with that, I've got um, my data now tagged. I added a new tag, even though it was implied. So what I will have to do is um, essentially go to my service and refresh the analytic cache. So I go here and say refresh. Now everything should be all set. I'm now ready to go find that point and do something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something I use all the time. And these are these analytic proxy points. Uh, I do visualizations on them. I can do subtotal. Uh, there's all kinds of things you can do. So what I want to do is I want to find um, today's current, if this was energy, kilowatt consumption, right? So I'll just say today. So I have a uh, analytic or I have a numeric writable analytic proxy point. That's a mouthful. So I'm going to do, do something that I've done for best practices, try not to get confused of what is a real point, what is a proxy device point versus what is an analytic point. So I've kind of learned out of hard knocks to um, include any analytic proxy point, I expose the pole slot just so I visually see that green bar. Okay. Now, if I double click this, you'll see that it has a proxy extension and it is for the analytic proxy. Okay. So we're going to keep it relative. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to change the node because this is where you point to where to find the data. And in subsequent videos, I'm going to show you how you can start to run algorithms at different locations, but never have to change anything. So it's pretty cool. So I am looking for the HS energy tag. All right. Uh, I do need to give it a, so essentially you say where to look, what you're looking for. Uh, the filter allows you to get more precise. So if you have additional tags, you want to make sure it has all of those. You can put them in the additional filter. I need to say how much data I want. So at this point, I'm going to just say, give me today, because I want this to be like a real-time reading. And that's what I want. So the next thing I want to do is my data is sampled every 15 minutes. So what will happen is if I don't give it a roll-up, I will get most likely the last 15-minute read. Right. And so these roll ups are important because you can then go in and say, all right, what do I want to do with that data set of today? And so I can do averages. I can find out how many readings are in that count. I'm just going to come down here to sum, sum it all up. I'm not going to worry about uh, intervals. I'm not going to change those or aggregation. Um, I am going to choose this uh, fire pole. It's a manual trigger that I've created. Um, in fact, I should probably have pointed that out. I think I pointed it out in another video. But in your analytic service, you have essentially a series of uh, polars. And these polars are important. Um, 
the uh, cyclic polar is just timer based, right? And I'm, I'm going to actually have a video on polars because this can get kind of confusing. Confusing. I just have one that I'm going to actually execute manually. So I'll just leave that exposed there. So if we go back today, today, add it all up, fire it on there, save it. Now, if you go back, I'm not going to have any data. If I would have chosen the default polar and it's, you know, a poll that runs every five minutes or every 15 minutes, I would have to wait that long. Uh, since I assigned it the trigger poll, I'm just going to go over here and say execute, and it will automatically then fire off that polar. It will go and run this uh, analytic calculation of giving me the kilowatt consumption for today. Boom. I have the answer. So take it a step further. Let's do another numeric point. I'll do it the long way. Normally I'd uh, copy and paste, but... I don't know why I'm doing it the long way. You all know how to copy and paste. It's been around forever, right? <laughs> so let me just go and create it again from scratch. So um, again, relative, I'm going to tell it what I'm looking for, right? So HS energy. I'm gonna say the time range instead of today, I'm gonna to use uh, yesterday, right? And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna add it all up. And I'm going to put it on the trigger puller, the fire. So now I have two points. One has an answer, one doesn't. Come over here, tell it to execute my uh, manual trigger, and bam. Now I have today's kilowatt consumption, and I can compare it to yesterday's kilowatt consumption. What's cool is if this is on a, a cycle puller, this will automatically be a real-time reading. So every time a new energy, which is read every 15 minutes, is put into the history file, anything that references today will automatically include that new read. So literally you can go create these dashboards that show you real-time readings against historical readings. So that is how you can basically use uh, analytics to do a query on this data, which was uh, uh, demo data for an energy meter to get today's and yesterday's historical and the time range you can have last year, the two years, 15 days from now, one day, you can control the window of data to give you the exact data set that you need to put in your proxy point or a graph.